class. So uh, we just did a transformational example in the last video. Um, so now we're going to move on to recoding a variable. Um, so this would happen if you had, say, ethnicity as one of your variables that you chose for your, uh, your paper. You want to limit those ethnicities down to two. So it's already a categorical variable of six, and you want to limit it to two. So we're going to start with uh, taking a categorical variable um, and moving it down to do two different categories. Uh, so we're going to do music preference. Music preference is made up of currently three categories. So we want to break that down into two. So before we do anything, let's take a look at what our categories are and make some decisions here. So here's music preference. So we look at our values here because it's going to tell us what ones, twos, and threes are. So one is free, two is owned digital, and three is owned physical. So right off the bat, I see a pattern here with two and three. So I want to combine my owned versions together and compare owned to free. So we're going to combine two and three. We're going to turn our threes into twos. Simple enough. All right, so let's go to transform right up here. Recode into different variables. You don't want to recode into the same variable because you want to keep your original data. If you recode into the same variable, it will remove your original data and replace it with your new data. So you want to avoid that. You want to keep your original data in case you want to use it again later. So we're going to recode into different variables. It's going to create a completely new variable for you. So here we go. So uh, you click OK. You want to put in um, number of music preference here. So that would be how a person usually listens to music. If you're not sure, you can scroll over and tell you this is music preference. Or you can stretch the window out a little bit so you can get a better view of what the variable names are. So music preference is what we're using. It's our output variable. This is what our output is going to be. So we want to turn this variable into something else. So the output variable is going to be a completely new variable added onto our data set. So we're going to call this MusePref2. Now if you're noticing, um, over here, you see it already exists because we already created it. It's already in the file that you have opened. Uh, we're just going to go through the process of how that was created. Okay. So let's go back over here. So MusePref2, this is going to be a musical preference. Um, you can call it owned verse free. So it's important that you click change. This uh, little symbol right here, this little uh, question mark, that's telling us that it doesn't know what the variable is going to be. So we're typing it in. So in order for to make to make that change actually occur, you need to press the button change. Otherwise, it won't let you go any forward. So press change. It's going to tell you there's a variable named duplicate because it's right here. Just click OK. It's not going to do that normally if the data is already not there, but since it already is, we've already done this before, uh, just click OK. We're going to recreate it for this example. So uh, the next step you want to do is click all the new variables right here. It's our old value. Just pay attention to these. This is telling you right here that these are your old values and these are going to be your new values. Everything in this column right here is going to be what your values are changing into everything over here is what your values are already. Okay, so you want to make sure you remember that. So our old value right now is going to be a one. So one is our free music. They stream it free. That's going to stay the same. We want to make sure the free the, the free va values stay the same. So click OK. Um, it's important that you click add here, otherwise it won't. Um, so now you have your twos. Your twos are also going to remain the same because they're already purchased. So you want to keep between two categories. So these are purchased. So add that. And now you have your threes. So your threes are now going to fall in the same category as the twos. Um, they're going to be the purchased uh, types of music. So you click that. So now you have twos and threes both going into a new category of twos. Now to be very, very certain that your data does not change, um, in the way that you don't want it to, you want to put system or user missing. This indicates to SPSS that you have missing data in this category, or if you don't, you still want to make sure you do this, but you have notated that there's missing data in that category and you want that same data to carry over into uh, missing in this new category. So you don't have to go through the process of notating it as missing again. So let's pick system or user missing, a user if you put it in, 
and you put that there. And then if you may have missed something along the way, um, say some values don't fall into this category, you simply put these buttons, all other values and copy old values. It won't happen, any, nothing will change for this example, but it's good to have that just in case you left something out. So you press continue. Um, you want to, if you want to pause it right now, just take a look at these values to make sure you're matching up. All right, so now you have your categorical variable turning into a smaller categorical variable. Press OK. All right, so now let's look at our music save. So we have music preference. So let's look here. So if this might not already exist, if it does, you're fine. So one is streaming, which is free. Just change that to free. And the other one's owned. So purchased. So you can change that to purchased or you can keep it the same. All right, so free or purchased, free or owned. All right, so that's good. Now we know what those variables actually stand for. So now we're gonna be doing some recoding with a continuous variable or a quantitative variable. So how do you take a variable such as uh, age, for instance, and make it into a categorical variable? So same process. Let's go up here to transform right up at the top. Again, recode into different variables. We don't want to change our data set at all. Keep our original data. Click this out. You don't need this anymore. It won't affect the data you've already created. Now we're going to change age. We're going to put our age, which is a continuous variable, as you can see right here. This is all continuous. You see the multiple numbers. So uh, we're now going to change that to a categorical variable. So let's change the name first. Let's do age uh, cat. All right. Then we'll put our label down here, age in three categories. Make sure you press change. All right, now we're going to define all the new values. Make sure you remove these. These need to go before you can do anything. Keep your missing and keep your else and over and all that. Remove these. You don't need those anymore. All right, now you're gonna put in your new values. So uh, let's just say that uh, one category is gonna be 35 years old and below. So uh, range lowest through 35. That means the lowest age you have, um, in this case it looks like 20, uh, but it could be anything, the lowest value you have in that variable all the way through to this value that you're inputting. So 0 to 35 is going to be in here, or whatever your lowest value is. It's going to be up to 35 is going to be here. So it's going to be your first category. Your next category, your category 2, is going to be your range of 36 to 50. So range right here, type in 36 through 50. It's very important that if you have anything that says, oh, I want to put a third category of 10 to 11, that's going to be right here. So uh, whenever you have more than two categories, you're eventually gonna have to use a range. So it's good just to practice with it. So 36 to 50 is our second category. So new value here, be two. And then you have range to highest. This is gonna tell you um, whatever number you put in here, in this slot, all the way through to the highest value you have in your variable set. You don't have to put that in there. The highest value you have among, among that variable. So in this case, uh, we're going to start at 51 and up, because we already have 50. So 51 right here, all the way up to the highest value we have is what we're telling the computer. And this would be our third category. And uh, you have it all here. Make sure everything's correct. There's no redundancies. All right, you click OK. And all set. So let's go to our output. Let's take a look at it. Uh, our variables. So here we go. So we see the age category has been created. Quick spot check. Let's check it out and see. Um, all right. So our our one variable for age category, all the way right here, it's going to be one. And our age over here is 32. So that falls below our 35 range that we set. So that's what we expected to see. So that's good. Um, 51 right here, that is 
51 and up, our third category, so that's great. And 41 falls between 36 and 50, so it should be two, exactly as we see it here. So that's good. So uh, now that that's over with, we've now successfully taken a quantitative variable and we've turned it into a categorical variable. So uh, we're just gonna do one more thing on this video and it's gonna be data selection. So say you wanted to view only people um, that uh, their marital status was one, so they're single. So you're only interested in single individuals. Well, how do you do that? Great question. You go to uh, data up here next to transform all the way down to select cases. So now you're gonna select that you're interested in running data if the person is single, if the value of marital status equals one. So click if condition is satisfied, if, and find marital status here, highlight it and click over, if marital status equals one. So now I'm interested in any data and any analyses only if marital status equals one. Then you press continue And now you have this set. So when you go back to your data, you press OK, you're gonna see there's a bunch of X's here. So just cross-reference that these X's are all places of the two. These should all be twos, and they are, and these should all be twos, and they are. Just spot check, you don't have to go through everything. Um, so that looks good, and so it turns out that our select data actually worked. So you'll see if anything comes up, um, analyze, frequencies, Let's go to marital status. Just click that. And let's just see what happened here. So only five are valid, single. So that's the only thing that came through because we selected the uh, second case out for that instance. So I hope this helped. Um, you know, if, if you're having any issues, rewind it, rewatch it. Um, it's very important that you know this basic information. All right, have a good day. We'll see you guys soon.